and welcome to episode 4 of MS Talks, Keep Moving Forward. Today we will be looking into how MS doesn't only affect the patient, but also the caregivers, the family, and need for a strong support network. Caring for a friend or a loved one with MS can be an emotional experience arising from the complex and unpredictable nature of the disease. In this episode, we'll provide advice on how people living around an MS patient can support in their management of MS. Today we have two guests, Nurse Esma and Nurse Joel. Nurse Esma Ahmed is a registered nurse who has a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. In 2019, Esma moved to the Neurology MS Specialty Clinic where she has been working closely with over 300 MS patients and their caregivers. And Joel Masouh is currently the clinical manager of the Neurology Institute and MS Center at Harley Street Medical Center, Abu Dhabi. She is the first nurse and healthcare professional in the Middle East to be double certified as a multiple sclerosis certified nurse and a multiple sclerosis certified specialist. She also lectures about MS to graduate students, patients, and the community. Welcome, Asma, and welcome, Joel. When someone is diagnosed with MS, it can be an emotional experience, but the caregivers are often forgotten about. In your experience, how does a diagnosis affect family and close friends, Asma? Uh, first of all, I would like just to give a brief introduction about the multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is... Uh, the most common non-traumatic disabling disease that affects young adults, young people, in an age group between 20 and 40 years. The problem with multiple sclerosis is that it has unpredictable and uh, fluctuating uh, nature with uh, an progressive and uh, aggressive uh, course. You might find someone with multiple sclerosis have mild symptoms uh, during the, uh, up in their diagnosis, while you might find someone in a wheelchair during one year or being unable to talk or write. Multiple sclerosis threatens own personal autonomy, dignity, independence, family planning, limiting the achievements of own life goals. Not only individuals with multiple sclerosis, they are suffering or being affected by the disease, but also their significant other. It could be their family, caregivers, partners, close friends, colleagues. How much they will be affected, it will be related on how, how the relationship is. There, there are a lot of challenges uh, on uh, family members uh, on how they have to deal with the individual with the multiple sclerosis. Uh, because, uh, we want to emphasize on something. Because the disease has unpredictable and uh, fluctuating cause, it's too hard for the family members to understand and to know what the individual, their loved individual with multiple sclerosis needs on a day-to-day uh, -day, uh, basis, uh, one week to another week. And I believe that uh, if we will talk about their challenges, it will be ma mainly three challenges. Challenge number one, that uh, family, uh, they have first to, uh, the, uh, to help the individual uh, how to have a healthy grief process. We know that uh, any individual, when, when he will be diagnosed with MS, he will, have, uh, he will go to normal uh, griefing process like uh, denial, uh, anger, frustration, and so on. So uh, the biggest challenge of family is that to help this individual to reach to the final stage of uh, grieving, which is acceptance, to accept the disease. And uh, challenge number two is that uh, family, they have to understand, to know the disease, to learn uh, how to live with the disease, and to know the invisible symptoms of the disease. There are a lot of invisible symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Uh, if we will tackle some invisible symptoms like cognitive uh, dysfunctions, um, if family doesn't know that the person with one multiple sclerosis have uh, cognitive impairments, like they cannot multitask, they can they forget a lot, uh, they cannot uh, uh, they they have uh, speed of information, they can't process information, give information too low, they will misinterpret the behavior of the multiple sclerosis. Maybe they will think that this person, oh, he has a manipulative behavior. He's doing that purposefully because he doesn't care. He doesn't uh, being interested with conversation and so on. Also, another invisible symptom like fatigability. If family doesn't understand and uh, know that uh, one of the most common symptoms of multiple sclerosis is fatigability, they will blame the person with multiple sclerosis that he doesn't want to help, he's not cooperative at all, we're not willing uh, to help us. Or they might uh, do wrong re reorganizing to home duties or household duties. Like they will give, uh, they will change rules and responsibilities, but they are forgetting that uh, they have uh, to assign tasks based on the energy conservation uh, strategies. The third challenge, I believe, is 
how to observe and monitor the progressive course of uh, multiple sclerosis with their beloved ones. The, the disease itself is progressive in its nature. So they have to observe, they have to explain, they have to attend with the doctor uh, visits and so on. All these challenges, it's really very hard for the family. So just to add a little bit to what Mona said, also some of the most important challenges are also for women living with MS because MS, as we know, is more common in women specifically. So women who are uh, trying to start their careers, build their family lives, maybe uh, planning pregnancy uh, and all that. So the challenges around being a woman with everything that you have to do in our modern world and having MS on top as a chronic disease is definitely um, some of the biggest challenges we can think of specifically for women. And I always like to focus on women who have MS as well. So how do you think a caregiver can support an MS patient in his bed? So definitely um, uh, family members in general, but specifically the partner of the, of the patient has to be very supportive, disclosing diagnosis early on in relationships, to be open about your diagnosis and um, to really get the support you need from the partner that you're going to share your life with because you cannot... Uh, um, you know, have a disease, uh, uh, a chronic disease such as MS and be with an unsupportive partner. Uh, they're going to have to help you with the adjustments and the invisible symptoms that um, uh, Asma talked about, especially fatigue, especially um, uh, cognitive symptoms, even mental, uh, mental health problems such as depression, which is also very common in MS. So Asma, what do you think? You mentioned a lot of challenges that MS patients struggle with, but what do you think is the biggest challenge for MS patients in this battle? Is this, uh, is this um, the biggest challenge that they need support, continuous support? And uh, I think the psychological health, as uh, Joel mentioned, it's very, it does really matter for MS patients. Um, when you will be diagnosed, it's not easy for you to accept that you have a chronic condition. So in that point, you need your family to be around you to grieve healthy. Because most of uh, MS individuals, they will end up with depression and being isolated totally. I have a problem, I cannot walk, I have a lot of things, so better to isolate myself and to be aside from being an active member in the society. All this, it's, I think it's the biggest challenge, to be an active member in the society despite my disabilities. Joel, what adjustments do you think an MS patient need to do in his home in order to overcome these challenges? Well, um, I would definitely say it depends on the level of, uh, of uh, uh, dysfunctions or disabilities the patient has. Because um, as Asma was saying, MS is very unique in each patient. It's really like a snowflake disease. Each patient is very different from the next patient. And we always say if you've met one person with MS, you've really met one person with MS. So you can't, um, it's tough to say this, uh, make the same adjustments for all kinds of patients. It depends on disability level. Uh, it also depends on who are you living with. But let's say people who have more advanced MS, um, uh, some mobility problems, definitely we always recommend getting an eye from uh, like an occupational therapist or someone to come and assess the, ha the house and see if there are safety problems uh, at, the, at the house, like let's say in uh, the bathroom and the shower, uh, risk of falls, risk of slipping. We have to add adjustments in the bathrooms, uh, like rails, handrails to hold on to, um, make the home more and more safe so that we don't deal with problems such as falls or fractures, let's say. Uh, and of course, make um, opportunities for energy conservation at home. So like teach patients how to divide their time uh, so that they are, um, you know, they do uh, the most part, important part of their maybe daily chores at the time where they have less fatigue, maybe, and adjust around that as well, and get the help they need also from either, as we said, partners, families, or even uh, uh, helpers that are needed uh, and can be supplied in certain countries, even from the government uh, itself as well. I just want to add about the family adjustment as well. Family, they have to understand. You cannot help your loved individual with multiple sclerosis if you will not acknowledge the disease itself. If you will not acknowledge that by any way or another, you will be affected by multiple sclerosis, 100% sure. So I believe that I'm advising all family members and uh, caregivers, you have to share, you have uh, to have a teamwork, share task, and teamwork for how, when you, when every member in the family will consider that multiple sclerosis is their common enemy, they will start to help each other, and by that, they will help their loved individuals. 
uh, going back to your uh, work related issues i believe that uh, in the country we have a lot of uh, uh, work related issues uh, with the multiple sclerosis patients if we will go back to the law law number uh, 29 in 2006 uh, the law it uh, tells that the UA government of the uae protects the rights of uh, people with special needs the UA government of the uae always uh, promotes uh, to have uh, equal and fair job opportunities for people with special needs uh, the, the evidence is uh, the community of development and the uh, zaid hair organization which were, which were mainly built up to have and provide the medic, uh, people of determination card for uh, those people who, who suffer from uh, special needs. People of determination card, it's to promote uh, job opportunities for those special uh, needs people uh, to deal with them without being discriminative uh, or uh, neglected. But the problem, uh, um, all the multiple sclerosis patients, they have the POD card, but the problem is the patients themselves, they don't know their rights, how to protect themselves through this card. And also, I think there's a lack of awareness by their companies or workplaces uh, to uh, use this car uh, to appreciate and uh, being adhered to the pillars of this uh, car. Because uh, from my experience, you will find uh, people with multiple sclerosis suffering. They were complaining, my job is under the sun. And I kept telling my employer about my condition that I have multiple sclerosis. And as a multiple sclerosis individual, they are suffering from heat insensitivity. They cannot tolerate the heat because immediately they will suffer from fatigability. But still, they don't uh, appreciate or uh, listen to them. Uh, other, they will complain that I have long hours of uh, working. I'm asking to reduce my uh, working hours despite the medical report and everything. I'm still at risk for being terminated, and they are causing a lot of stress to me. This is stress, as we know, also one of the most uh, MS trigger uh, flare ups. It's the stress. Do patients find it difficult to reach out uh, to a family or community for help? Definitely, it's uh, it's probably starting to become a little bit more easier with uh, raising awareness in the region about multiple sclerosis, but of course, it's still very difficult. Um, simply because it's MS is still considered a taboo disease, uh, in some cases, of course, not in general. So people don't know a lot about MS when they want to disclose their diagnosis to either family or even to uh, to the community or to their work as well to their employers. It's difficult to disclose a diagnosis because they know the person uh, listening to them doesn't really know what multiple sclerosis is. And uh, they might view them in a different way after they disclose their diagnosis. They might uh, have some, you know, prejudices or uh, judgments uh, for these uh, people who have disclosed their diagnosis. So um, what we can do as nurses is really to try to help patients decide when is the best time maybe to disclose diagnosis if they are ready to do it. Maybe what is the best way as well. Sometimes we bring in families uh, to sit together in a family like a caregiving conference to explain about the disease in a multidisciplinary nature with the doctor and the nurse present so that we can uh, really address all kinds of questions um, about uh, illness, about symptoms, and specifically invisible symptoms, as we were saying before, explaining how MS causes fatigue, how MS causes uh, mood uh, uh, disorders like depression. And as for the community, uh, also it's definitely um, difficult for people to publicly disclose, especially uh, in, in our region, probably because uh, of the taboo issue. Uh, but we are seeing more and more people doing that in public, and I think it's uh, it's uh, um, it inspires other people to do so as well. And this is something I think patients dis um, discuss a lot with their nurses because nurses really have that holistic approach and have that time to sit and discuss that with uh, with uh, with the patients and really guide them through that process. Joel, if if someone does not reach out, how do you think like how can we make them um, find the right resources and reach out uh, to the right person? Well, I think the pandemic has really made a lot of things easier for us. It has made um, uh, virtual and online communication much, much easier than before. So it has opened new avenues for all of us to communicate together, uh, really removing borders all, all around the world. So people with MS and caregivers with MS, they can, uh, and as nurses, we can guide them to uh, uh, support groups, to uh, uh, awareness uh, or sessions targeted to patients and family members so that they learn more and more about uh, MS and so that they talk with people who uh, are going through the same experiences as uh, the experiences they're going through. 
And also there's lots of uh, resources and literature written around like family caregivers and, uh, and MS. There are books targeted to uh, uh, children who have parents who have MS so that children understand uh, what does it mean? So like books called My Mommy Has MS or My Daddy Has MS. So they can understand better what does it mean for a parent to have MS. There are also books uh, targeting the experiences of caregivers themselves. So um, someone who has a sister uh, with MS, someone who has a son with MS, a father with MS, and they talk about how they went through those experiences because it's very important to really support as well the mental health of caregivers as well. Uh, being able to, to let them, as we said, uh, discuss these issues with like-minded people, with people going through the same experiences they're going through as well. And as we, you know, is out of the pandemic, this can also be done in live uh, physical events that can really help people uh, get together more around this topic. So your point is it's important for MS patients to reach out. So Esma, what advice can you give to other nurses who support in the MS clinics? They can do a lot uh, with helping the doctor and their neurologist uh, in uh, handling and uh, discussing uh, problems uh, on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. Uh, they can uh, help also their doctors by uh, doing uh, necessary referrals whenever it's needed. Uh, uh, they can sit and provide uh, psychological and emotional support to the caregivers, uh, uh, explain uh, problems to the doctor that the, the patient and their caregiver is suffering from this problem, how we can help them. They can discuss and explain a lot, uh, advocating their rights uh, to have uh, equal uh, employment opportunities and uh, other things. They, they, she will hear it from uh, caregivers and the patients themselves. So Esma, tell us, do families uh, feel that they are battling alone? Yeah, some families, they do feel that they are alone. And one of the biggest mistakes that uh, they feel they are feeling alone. I just want to advise them that you have to get professional support. You are human beings. You will have a range of emotions, sometimes anger, fear, frustrations, depression. So you have to share your problems with other uh, beloved uh, people around you in order to gain also psychological support, emotional support. Professional support is very important. You have a nurse. You can talk to her. You have to express your emotions, your problems, uh, people around you. And they are ready to help. So just uh, go and express uh, whatever problems you have to them. I would like to thank you both for adding to our MS Talks. Keep moving forward. We, it's an honor to meet you. And we learned a lot from this session. Thank you so much.